All right, what's up, everybody? Hopefully, uh, my audio is coming through all right. Hey, Zaku. Hey, Pyro. It is Saturday, so not my usual day to stream. Hey, what's up, Mr. Drackmore? Um, but of course, I'm all right, what's up? okay. Thank, thank the Lord, my audio is working as intended. All right. I can't shake the feeling that I'm forgetting something, but you all know me, Midnight Hatter, and uh, you all know this whole mess. Obviously, this is like a, uh, this is just like a allegory for my life. It's just what a mess this is. <laughs> cheers, cheers. So, getting back into um, this... I'm calling it an upscale or maybe an upcycle of this old no grade uh, GM. <clears throat> we cleaned it up and did a lot of stripping last time. We're probably going to have to do a little bit more because I've still got, you know, the, the remnants of some. Uh... It looks like this music track I'm working on. Colors everywhere, but it works. Yeah, exactly. Um, I've still got the remnants of some panel lines that I had done on this kit, um, still on here. So I'm going to go in with a file and continue to shave away plastic. Hopefully we can get to some scribing. I've got my, so I've got this plastic scriber that, um, it's the first one that I bought. And I guess it does the trick, although I gotta say, I don't know that I ever used it properly. I have been practicing on spoons to try and get the, the technique down. But I find that it gouges such a wide panel line that it doesn't look as good as, say, this guy. Which is essentially just a mechanical pencil with a needle in it. But, it's fancy. So I hope everyone here is having a good weekend so far. Um, so I think this, there are two panel lines on these thigh parts that I think only half of them are my terrible ones and the other half were actually on the kit to begin with because these ones along the bottom actually look well done. Well, in the past, I have not used a scriber for um, for panel lines. I've used the back of a uh, hobby knife. So, and I actually found my good hobby knife. Uh, I do need to swap the blade out. That's looking pretty bad. But, you know, instead of gouging this way, you know, you kind of drag the, the reverse side of the tip of the blade. And, uh, I mean, I've seen people have good results doing that. Uh, I was not one of them, so. This is one of those times that I wish I had a uh, shotgun mic so that you could get that sweet uh, Gumpla ASMR of sanding sounds. So I'll go in pretty hard with the, with this, uh, I don't even know what it's called, this particular file, but that's one of my rougher files. And uh, <laughs> no, don't get me one. Although I would, uh, I would value your opinion on shotgun mics because you probably know which, which one's a, a decent one. I see a lot of people around there with the uh, with like the road brand ones, but I don't know if they're any good. Yeah, so that's a lot smoother. Ah, and I've got my little parts factory down here. Uh, I've been copying tons and tons of little uh, little parts and pieces. Um, some of them are resin, some of them are epoxy putty. You know, I wanted to see what uh, what would give me the better results. So I've got a few replacement thrusters. 
<laughs> get the binaural mark mic with the ears. Yeah, that's all I need. Uh, so I've got the little like thrusters that are going to replace the um, the thrusters that I lost from this backpack. Uh, they're a little larger than the ones that I think were originally on it, but you know that'll be kind of cool looking. I also well, I finished one arm, but uh, I copied these parts that are pretty common on newer high-grade kits. So the older uh, one forty-fourth scale. Um, hey, what's up, Sevy? <laughs> the older one to one forty-fourth scale no-grade uh, kits. They kind of have this joint in here where the the poly cap is exposed and you can kind of see into the empty void of the part. So a lot of the newer um, high grade 1 to 1 44th scale kits have this little guy on them, which is a, uh, it's just like a cap or like a cover that goes over the top of that, of that joint to hide it. Now, of course, the downside of that is that I did, uh, on the shoulder piece, I had to uh, gouge out a little spot there for the, for the joint piece to sit inside of, and so now it, uh, the, the peg is gone, so I need to replace the peg, although I think I need to sand that down a little bit more because it's looking, um, it's looking a little large. But now it sits quite neatly inside that shoulder joint. I think it's pretty cool. So I need to do that with this arm. Uh, I used to be a snob about it all, but lately with uh, Mrs. Requiem's audio, I've been super impressed with the $30, $40 Amazon ones. Huh. Yeah, I mean, I guess usually it's the same product. It's just, uh, you know, not brand name uh, most of the time with those with those types of products. So, additionally, I've got a couple of these little bits and bobs, uh, if I can pick it up. And again, you know, I have these, like, official Bandai parts that I, you know, put on a piece of tape, pour some silicone over the top of them, and then make these copies of them so that I can, uh, you know, make more of them. What's up, Scorpionog? So, like, for instance, uh, you know, I tried to put a panel line on here, obviously, and it looks pretty god-awful, but I'm thinking if I sand away that panel line and replace it with, I can glue down one of these panels, It'll still look like a hatch, but not look as uh, janky. Oh, can't even see that. Oh, lurk away. Lurk away. Indeed, this is the old no grade 1 to 1 44th scale ground GM. smooth it out a little bit there we go no more panel line and then the question is whether I use this one or one of these other ones of the same little hatch I think I'm gonna go with this black one because I can at least see that all of the details are in there intact and actually now that I now that I need the super glue I realized what I forgot which was to go grab the super glue so I am going to be right back just a second I'm gonna go run and grab my super glue
right, I have returned with the, stick, the sticky stuff in hand. Let's see, speaking of no grade, what happened to the RE100 line? Yeah, I I like the RE100s. Um, and what's sad is that my favorite suits always tended to be RE100 and not Master Grade. So, for instance, I've got the RE100 Bawu sitting back there that I still need to finish. Um, there was also the RE100 Zaku Kai. It was kind of a... It's kind of a tease that they made a Master Grade Alex 2.0, but the Zaku Kai, they did it dirty and gave it a RE100. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they always do the Bawu dirty. It's a shame. I want to make sure I get all the sawdust out of here so that I don't uh, accidentally glue some sawdust onto the part. So you may recall during my last episode of uh, RE100 Shoku. Oh... Yeah, man, the Nightingale is a fun kit. I wish I had one. Uh, you may recall on the last episode of uh, Gumpla with Midnight Hatter, we, um, you know, stripped off all of the terrible weathering that I had done to this kit. I ended up giving it a bath in a uh, proprietary mixture of Dawn Dish Soap and alcohol. And that seemed to do a pretty decent job stripping a lot of the remaining, um, a lot of the remaining gunk from all of the creases and crevices from this kit. Obviously, some of it was still left behind. And then I did go in and I filled in a couple of parts with putty that I could not strip. So that way, at least, they're sealed in. So, let's see what we can do here. <clears throat> oh yeah, lurk away, my people. Do not, do not uh, feel pressured or inclined to uh, chat with me. <laughs> Master grade Kshatriya win. Yeah, that's uh that'd be nice. I heard the follow sound. So thank you for the follow, whoever followed, but obviously I did not have my alert box up, so it didn't uh it didn't show. So I apologize for that. There's like a little piece of dirt or something in here. There we go. All right. Ah, oh, welcome to the chat. Yeah, resin kit of the Kshatriya. And of course there's a What's that Gunpla group that does all of the uh, open hatch versions of kits? I think they did a uh, 1 100 scale Kshatriya out of resin. Hope we got that well centered. Centered and straight. Um, 
Oh, Master Grade Devil Gundam. What would the, like, size of that be? I feel like that would be massive. Marine type or Barzam? Yeah, Barzam gets no love. I don't want to sand away too much of this, but I do want it to look straight. Yeah, I follow um, Ani Playmo on Instagram, and uh, he was lamenting the fact that we're getting all these Advance of Zeta high-grade kits right after he finishes all of the Advance of Zeta kit, kit bashes that he was making. But honestly, I think that those kit bashes are probably going to look better than uh, whatever Bandai gives us. Ooh, yeah, I, I need to get back to my uh, 8th MS Team diorama back there. Um, what's the uh, car model that you're working on, Mr. Drackmore? Let's see, I need something to measure. I can smack some panel lines on the shield here on the broad side, but I want to make sure that I'm getting the symmetry right, unlike the last time. Yeah, I've heard that that's one of the better uh, conversion kits, the bars am from, from the Mark II. What do you guys think? Yay or nay? Should I uh, come up with a better design? I'm thinking, well, it's not actually. <laughs> Let me uh, rephrase that because I'm actually not going to scribe all the way across the part. I'm thinking it's going to be just a quick little diagonal line. So we're looking at doing something like this. That's subtle enough of a panel line, or should I do something a little more complex? Almost looks like an angry face. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that, but uh, but I bet it's going to be a sweet looking car. You know, I was even able to re recreate this if I wanted to uh, see if I can position this right. If I wanted to make this a stolen Xeon ground GM, I could do that.
Hmm. Oh, that's nice. It's pretty sweet of you to do that, man. Using your powers for good. I remember years ago, uh, a woman commissioned me to do a superhero portrait of her husband, but the problem was, is like, I never got any, uh, I never got any like feedback from her. It was like, I, I gave her, uh, some sketches and said, Hey, which one do you like? She said, they look, they all look good. Keep going. And I was like, well, but keep going with which one? <laughs> There's a lot of emails back and forth like that. And so the uh, the portrait never got done, which is, you know, pretty par for the course for me. Surprise, I, I didn't finish something. But she also didn't pay me, so it's not like I stole. Nobody, nobody accused me of being one of those people that doesn't deliver on their work. Ooh, a camu zani. That's pretty. That's a. That's a great idea, actually. Make this a. Uh, a zeon in disguise. More than meets the eye. I don't want to sand so much that uh, I lose the the sharp edges of these details, but in some cases I think I'm going to. All right, now we've got a nice clean palette to work with. I don't get sawdust in my drink. So whenever possible, I like to use landmarks on the part itself in order to uh, give me points of reference so that I can make my panel lines symmetrical. So let's say for instance if we were doing this part here you know I've got these two sort of joints so I would try to join those lines and then like I've got a joint here and a joint here and so we try and join those two lines and then it just be the intersection of those two and so you'd get that nice now of course I'm gonna do that again but you know not freehand it because you know I'm trying to do a decent job here Otherwise, you'll see me back 10 years later trying to uh, redo this kit again.
So now, might as well try and use some uh, electrical tape to mark it off. Waiting for winter to end so I can paint and build a new Gundam. Oh yeah. Don't they officially have the full Verka set of the uh, Wing Gundam team? So they've got a Wing Gundam Verka, Death Scythe Verka, Heavy Arms. Yeah, I hope you guys have a better uh, paint situation than I do because my paint setup is currently uh, whenever it's nice enough outside that I can open my garage door. Um, I did get a new air compressor that I was hoping I could use for both my tires, which constantly need reinflating, and also my airbrush, but uh, it is incompatible with the airbrush, so um, I'm going to have to get a new air compressor again. In the meantime, I can always resort to my trusty, uh, let's see if I've got one around here, trusty rattle cans. I was interested to see how this would work on an actual kit. I sprayed down a couple of spoons a few days ago, and one thing is I, I hate gloss finishes. But I, there's so many sweet uh, finish paints out there that I was looking at. Uh, there's a stained glass kit where, you know, it's basically a translucent spray paint that you, you hit glass with. And it will give you that, like, stained glass effect. So I was thinking to myself, well, what would that look like on a kit? But I suppose if this doesn't work, then that wouldn't be even worth trying, right? Oh, yeah. GOL add-ons. What's that? See if I've gouged up another. Uh... Oh, oh yeah. Wings and a tail for the Ultron. That's kind of an odd, odd look. I'm sure that some people like it, but I don't know if I would go for that. So yeah, a pretty subtle little panel line here. Trying my best to let the chisel do the work.
Dragon Gundam from G Gundam. Uh, I, wasn't it just called the Dragon Gundam? Or was it called something else? tape that if I'm gonna go in on it again here mm -hmm. they need more G oh yeah I mean, uh, I, I feel like that's ripe for, um, for build fighters kits is, is remixing G Gundam kits. So I think that the only reason they haven't done any is because there aren't enough G Gundam kits to actually convert into build fighter kits. But it's one of those things where it's like, you know, chicken and the egg, right? If they added some Build Fighters kits in the show that utilize G Gundam parts, then they can always retro retroactively make them into kits using the same molds. I mean, that's what they do now. Yeah, anything but more unicorns. <laughs> that would be my preference. Honestly, I would get if they uh if they made a from Advance of Zeta the the rosette and the dandelion, I would get that. Because then they could also use that same mold to redo the high grade Marisai. Because I'm pretty sure that the high grade Marisai is a terrible kit. Master grade Dovin Wolf, that would be another huge kit. <clears throat> Let's see how this is turning out. So it's like towards the outside of the part, the uh, panel line looks good, but right at the uh, where the two lines meet is not quite borne in yet.
one. Oh. At least this one I'm getting a nice straight line. Oh no, you, that's even visible. Let's see here. Get that autofocus to work. Autofocus, the bane of all Gunpla YouTubers. Maybe I just need to uh, pop it up on this uh, alternative camera. If the light were... Look at that, it looks like Morticia Adams with like the... The shutters. <laughs> um, the Mark V is already a thing, so don't. Oh, that's true. You just need like a different head sculpt, right? And I think I'm going to do that thing where I put like a uh, little rivet indentations in here. But I'm nervous about it because I am notoriously bad about them being asymmetrical. So I'd rather start with the lines and then go in and do the rivets than, than do everything on one side and then try to recreate everything on the other. And I am going to kind of go deep with these panel lines because I'm nervous that uh, if I'm going to use like rattle cans for painting, that it's uh, not going to show through as well. So now we just need to update the opposite leg to match. See, I never should have been trying to do uh, as complex panel lines as I was doing, especially given that I had not the right tools to be doing them. <laughs> I mean, I'm still not measuring, per se. I'm using kind of, I'm using a roundabout way of measuring my lines. But, you know, ideally, if the parts are the exact same size, then my reference points should be in the exact same place. So... See, I've got the super glues dry on this guy now. Now the question is, do I slap a little exhaust vent on the front of the chest? Even though it wouldn't make a lot of sense, because if you think about it, let's see. If you think about it, if the cockpit is here, if there were an exhaust vent right here, wouldn't that be like the pilot's legs? Maybe he needs like a an in-cockpit cooling system. I don't know. Thank <laughs> you. 
Just want like a nice smooth surface for this to adhere to. It's got like a little bit of a a little bit of a concave look to it that I'm trying to get around. Yeah, I think these uh, new thrusters are going to look good. But yeah, I do feel a little bit like Willy Wonka with my little workshop of uh, of duplicate parts. Although I suppose that makes me more like um, what's the what's the bad guy in Willy Wonka? Slugworth. I suppose that makes me more like Slugworth since I'm copying and not innovating my own everlasting gobstopper. So I don't mind the fact that this is going to overhang a little bit here because the thruster is slightly bigger than the uh, than the port on the backpack was. The trick, of course, is going to be getting them uh, symmetrical. No, no, this is a uh, a no grade. Um, one one forty fourth scale ground GM that I made a decade ago and did a terrible job. So we are rebuilding it. You know, bigger, stronger, faster, all that good stuff. Let's hit that again. Try that a second time. position trying to get these two parts symmetrical is proving much more difficult than I anticipated yeah that's not going to work Much better. That's the tricky part with these uh, little paste not <clears throat> with these little paste on um, new recommended daily sipping whiskey, Jameson Black Barrel. No, definitely not. I uh. Oh, by the way, welcome to the chat, Tater. 
good to hear from you again. Uh, I am definitely more of a bourbon than a scotch guy as far as whiskey goes. Um, so that sounds delectable to me as far as Irish and Scottish whiskeys go. There we go. That looks right. Of course, it's hard to tell since one I cast in black plastic and the other one I cast in white, so I don't know. It's like it looks right, but it also could not be. I think it's right. Time will tell. I slap it on the back there. Been wanting that along with a GM Custom, haven't gotten around to it yet. Bandai always, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was trolling around uh, looking at some of the kits available right now, and I'm trying to, you know, temper my, my desire to invest in new kits until I complete at least two of the projects that I have ongoing. Um... Although maybe I could get you guys to help me because one of the many projects that I've been working on a little closer to completion than this is um, is my high grade Bawu. Um, don't get me wrong, the top is perfect, totally fine. I love the top of the Bawu. Um, I'm definitely gonna fill in his uh, his chest decoration with some kind of uh, maybe a fluorescent paint that way I get like a nice light effect going on with it but I added a set of wings to the skirt of the lower half because I want the the Bawu Nutter to not look as idiotic as a pair of legs spread out like you know like that is not an aircraft <laughs> in, in any book so I was thinking to myself well what if we added on a set of wings here but now it looks like a pair of legs with a pair of wings attached to it so I really do need some something to um, to really bring this kit around to looking more like an aircraft when it's in flight mode plus the nice thing about these wings they you know fold up and and tuck down so that when it is uh, in when it's in its robot mode, it looks pretty sweet. And of course, there's a bunch of different ways to, to mount them, too. You know, it's like, do you have the wings tucked back like this? And then slide on the top. I don't even know if it'll fit this way because of the backpack. Yeah, so that's not going to fit. So the wings have to be tucked down to the side, kind of, uh, kind of lazily. I don't know. I need to come up with a way to attach them. Maybe I need to uh, drill a hole in the lower leg and put them in the uh, calf. Something. Are there additions? Yes. In fact, you know, it's, uh... <laughs> So I thought about that because the original parts, let's take the top off again here, the original parts that fit onto the sides are these tiny little, these little wings. So this is what it, uh, what it would normally look like in flight mode. So this half is how it came, and this half is what I added to it. Um, but I'm thinking if I take these, since I'm not using them for the waist anymore, and pop them, you know, down down here on the lower leg somewhere, that could be a sweet little addition.
30 minute mission option parts flight pack huh that might be the way to go these are the uh the kotobukiya um flight wings they are pretty much a direct ripoff of the zeta's backpack because they even have like a tail rudder that comes up in the in the back of the center of the of the backpack um but i thought it was kind of cool looking and it, it kind of goes with the bawu's overall look but yeah once i get that situation handled i can move on to painting them um let's see we're working on sanding this guy down Oh, uh, but yeah, Tater, this is uh, my my drink of choice, Legend. Uh, it is, I believe that it reflects me quite well, as it is a marriage of things American and Japanese. The uh, Some of the best distillers in, Amer in Kentucky and some of the best whiskey blenders in Japan. give you a bourbon that is aged in sherry wine casks that is just out of this world so for those of you watching who are of drinking age and who enjoy a good whiskey legend is the way to go seems to be the space between the legs when they're faced out yeah, something like that. I kind of feel like um, if I were to if I were to re replace the back skirt with some kind of like tail that could arc up and be you know more of a I don't know more of a of a central body for the for the flight mode. The problem is like it's like I want to say it's a cockpit but there's no cockpit because there's no pilot for the lower half it's all remote controlled so of course it you know again it, it just looks idiotic when it's flying out there uh, split in half but it is one of my favorite uh, mobile suits oh thanks for the follow I appreciate it. I need to make that alert box a little bigger. Could barely see Mei Ling down there. So again, I'm going to use the same uh, technique that I used on the first leg, which is to kind of create an intersection between this these two points and these two points and then we're going to get that same little line there Yeah, I, I stream to uh, I stream to a lot of different platforms, but Twitch seems to have the best uh, chat um, integration compared to YouTube or DLive. And nothing wrong with preferring a good scotch. That seems to be a much manlier drink than than what I've got over here. And my love for bourbon was reaffirmed when I watched, uh, I believe it was a Hulu documentary about bourbon. Um, that was really good.
<laughs> the manliest seltzer. Oh yeah, the uh, so yeah, the restream chat bot does a, a decent job of pushing everybody's messages to all the different platforms. Um, it can even support uh, messages to Discord and Twitter as well, but I don't think anyone's going to want to watch me build Gundams on Twitter. One scotch that I have wanted to try for a while was, um, I read about it in a design blog. Uh, working in graphic design, I read a lot of corny design blogs, but there is one that has to do with the uh, packaging behind a um, Scottish whiskey brand called Peat Reekers. And they're, uh, it, it's like, apparently it's supposedly like a mid-shelf, um, a mid-shelf mid scotch, but... Uh, but their designs are just fantastic, and, you know, I know they say you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but, you know, if you're not going to judge it by its cover, then what else are you going to judge it by? I feel like that's how people buy wine, right? You know, like, nobody actually knows even the finest sommeliers in the world won't pick up a random bottle of wine and say like yeah i mean it says that it's got fruity notes and uh, a smoky finish so i'm going to try that they're like no this bottle looks fantastic <laughs> i'm probably generalizing and and being quite offensive <laughs> oh yeah lagavulin is uh is delicious if you're a scotch guy Oh, yeah, you're not kidding. YouTube is just, just generally awful. Am I doing this the wrong way? Oh, my God, I'm an idiot. See, don't drink in gumpla, kids. You'll end up screwing up your kit like I just did. So I got the intersection here right, but I was supposed to draw the line from the back of the calf to the front, not the not the top to the Stupid. Thank the Lord that they make this plastic thicker than my skull. Yeah, it all depends on taste, right? Let's try that again. If you are playing the Midnight Hatter drinking game now, you would have to take a shot for me screwing up. So, so drink them if you got them. So let's do this the right way this time. I 
thought it was a shorter line than the last time, and I was like, this is, something's wrong here. <laughs> oh, Evan Williams was the thing back in the day, back in college. Couldn't beat that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Have any of you guys uh, tasted the Rocks tequila yet? As I am not a tequila person, I have not. Just doesn't seem like my bag, baby. Oh, dude, I don't, I don't think that I've ever helped you out in a way that you wouldn't have done for me. I have, uh, but hey, cheers, brother. I hope things are, uh, are going well. And that goes for everybody, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't wish ill on anybody. I hope all you guys in the chat are having a good, a good go of things at the moment. Hope you are all healthy and happy. <laughs> oh man, yeah, old Evan Williams. That was that. Would... <laughs> if you got into trouble, it was because of that. I think I've got my pilot lines carved in well enough at this point. I hope so. The real test is going to be whether I made them symmetrical or not. Hey, what's going on, Ultron? Hope you're having a good weekend so far. Haven't gotten into too much trouble. There we go. There seems to be like a little stray, uh, stray line that I made that the uh, chisel keeps trying to pull to that left side, and I'm like, stop, stop. Let's sand that back a bit and see. That was a cheers. I will say I appreciate. It. Wish everyone in the chat, regardless of your streaming source, a good weekend. Hey, yeah, absolutely, brother.
Yeah, I think it's safe to say that you and I bailed each other out of a out of a great deal back in back in the old college days. In the before times. I mentioned before it's like getting that the point where they meet is the, the hardest part to carve in oh see got a little stray line that I need to clean up so what got me into gunpla honestly it was stumbling upon an episode of build fighters with your son you know i um i think that i was one of those geeky 90s kids that uh when gundam wing was on toonami and i saw that goofy edgy commercial where they f you know first started selling gunpla in the west Oh, I, I bought into that hard. The whole, like, level 5 Gunpla, one hour. Level 3 Gunpla, two days. <laughs> like, you know, there's the worst commercials ever. And, like, I hate n now. I'm like, why would you want to s rush building Gunpla when the whole point is to make them look good? Not to, it's, it's not a race. <laughs> um... So yeah, I uh, I definitely got into it when I was a teenager, and then put it down for I don't know like eight or nine years, and only recently picked it back up uh, when I collected a box of my old gunpla, and uh, then I started buying new kits and stuff that that reflected more my interest in the show, uh, because I you know back then obviously we were all Gundam Wing kids. But as time went on, I became more and more of a UC fanboy. Um, have you thought about getting a 3D printer for any of this? I, uh, I have. I am thinking about getting a 3D printer here soon. Uh, I cannot reveal the details of that because there's a... Uh, there's some conditional things that have to be met before I invest in the 3D printer, but yes, I am thinking about it. Right down to three paint. <laughs> what grade are you? Yeah. Too much effort to make trouble, you say. I disagree. Sometimes it is easier to get into trouble than it is to get out. Well, actually, 100% of the time it's easier to get into trouble than to get out. So, I think that these are symmetrical. But, you know, do my, do my bourbon-ladled eyes deceive me? Did I actually do good? Oh, jeez, of course this autofocus is killing me. Um, I suppose I can check from this angle. Can't even really see him. Let's see. I think they look symmetrical. Gundam Wing was the... <laughs> uh, I disagree with that sentiment. Uh, I appreciate Gundam Wing in the same way that I appreciate um, Iron-Blooded Orphans in that it got, it got people into Gundam.
but uh yeah and and honestly so my favorite series zeta gundam i actually didn't even watch it for the longest time i just played the video game gundam versus zeta gundam which tater i'm sure you remember me uh bogarting the tv at uh at the old chateau frequently um I mean, my wife teases me for putting, like, 2,800 hours into um, SD Gundam G Generation Genesis. She actually saw that, like, that was how many hours I had put on into it while I was playing on PSP. Uh, if she only knew that I had probably sunk, like, 30,000 hours into Gundam vs. Zeta Gundam from the time that I got it. Did I get it in high school? I swear I had the game before I started college. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hashtag Chateau. I got rid of that uh, rogue panel line there. Like I said, I don't want to get rid of the uh, of the good panel lines on these legs, or this half of the leg, I should say. Yeah, I wonder if I could. Um, It's like I don't want to put ink in it yet because obviously I'm going to be painting it. But I wonder if I can, if you guys could see the uh, panel lines better if I hit it with just a little line. So it's still a little messy because of the sawdust, but I think you can see them a little clearly now, a little more clearly. Oh, jeez. I think they're going to look good. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. You can always... Uh... Well, I had some shop towels down here. Ah, let's see. if you're still watching these uh, shop towels should look familiar because uh, my wife and I liked the ones that uh, Mrs. Requiem bought for us so much that that I got more <laughs> for hobby usage uh, as opposed to just mask usage rock the wing Gundam on Toonami but at that time I completely lost interest in model kits started with cars and aircraft yeah, I mean, I think that Build Fighters did a lot to get people back into Gunpla. And I mean, some of the Build Fighters kits are incredible. Like, I I cannot stop singing the praises enough of this guy. Um, although, <laughs> Drakmore, if you're still around, I, I lost the cigarette that I made. The magnetic cigarette that attached to the outside of his, uh, of his visor. Which is a shame. And my set fell apart. Um, 
for those of you who did catch the old uh, Gumpla challenge that Mr. Drackmore and I did, um, I created like this, you know, downtown neon set for for the Gundam to hang out on. Everything was one twelfth scale, and uh, the set fell apart. So. All right. So as for the shoulders, where's the last shoulder chart? Okay, we've got one, two, three, four. Here we go. I still, I'm still not sure if this is what I want to do for the shield. And I'm, you know, you you guys know me. I'm not gonna go too crazy with uh too many details I just want to add a little bit to it and of course you know when you've got a, a broad piece of armor like this where there's no detail on it at all you have to add something to it whether it is a panel line or two maybe some of those option parts I'm definitely going to add some decals to this guy um, in particular I'm going to use my old uh, rub on decal trick and see how they do. Any suggestions on uh, paint color from you all? Yeah, I'm definitely gonna. I so I have the Easy Eight that I'm working on, and I have. Um, the 0080 diorama that I'm working on. So I've got my Gundam Alex that I need to work on. I've got a lot of uh, projects in the in the old queue. Uh, one of the things that I started a while ago. Let's see. <laughs> So again, this is a, you know, a detail up on an older no-grade kit. Um, it is the S Gundam booster type. So it's like the one that doesn't have any legs. It just has like the, uh, the like leg mounted boosters, which it looks like one of the pegs broke off. That's a shame. But I'm thinking to myself, do I continue to build this kit the way that it was intended to be built, or do I have a little fun with it? Let's see, I've carved a few panel lines into it. I probably jacked up the panel lines on, on this arm, the shoulder. Yeah, they don't look very good. Um... But yeah, I have some ideas for him as well. And really, you know, this whole project with the ground GM is is ideally to build up confidence to start working on bigger, badder projects. Because you guys have seen how terrible some of my previous customs have turned out. This guy included. Um, he was pretty hideous looking when we first started, had like all these pipes coming out of him and parts from an old radio attached to him. Just really stupid. Master grade build strike and universe booster to make the star build strike that will. Oh yeah. Well, and so some of the uh, build fighters kits, I, I kind of like more than more than their you know in universe counterparts. The uh, I'm probably not going to pronounce it right, but the, like the Gion Ultron Gundam, the Ultron Gundam that's got like the two different colored heads for the dragon fangs hanging off the side of its shoulders. That thing is sweet looking. Um, 
it's like I would buy that and then build it in the Ultron Gundam's colors. Trying to get these stupid panel lines that I made before off of here. That looks well smoothed out. All right. Where's the I almost started drawing with my scribe. So this line goes all the way around. But I don't know how how much I like that. I, I, I definitely filled in the um the seam line with ink and just called it a panel line. Uh that's a cheap way of adding panel lines is to use what's already physically there, even if it doesn't look good. But this could be an opportunity to add some of these uh, little vents and such. Hey Coop! What are you doing? You gonna come say hi? Hey, butter. What are you doing? You good boy? What are you doing? No, no, no licks. No licks right now. Oh, you good boy. It wouldn't be a stream without Cooper coming to keep me company. All right. So I don't think I'm going to add the same lines that I did on the inside of the calves to the outside since they already have lines added. Oh, geez. I'm definitely going to have dog hair in the uh, final product hair which isn't a bad thing. I mean, generally speaking, it does improve almost every custom Gunpla. If your Gunpla doesn't have dog hair in it, are you even really a Gunpla builder? <laughs> oh... Yeah, Coop is due for a walk here in a little bit. Actually, he's due for dinner here soon. Probably in about an hour. Which is probably why he's sniffing around here. He's like... He's like, I, I know that you're farting around in the garage. Bob, Bob, stop farting around in the garage. Come feed me. Alright, so... What to do with this shield? So I suppose I could if I draw a line between these two points. Again, you know, I'm all about using using landmarks as a way of uh, marking where I'm going to make my make my incision this one might be a little more complex than most
What was that? So if we do like a little box, something like that, I don't know. Vents. We can add the vents in here somewhere. I think that might be kind of cool. You probably won't even be able to see these vents because I cast them in clear plastic. And sanding the back side of them is a major pain in the butt since they don't really have anything to grip onto. <laughs> now is that uh did you give I'm, I'm assuming that jupiter is your dog and not your son no <laughs> um so did you give jupiter like a like a legit beef bone because uh i hope it's not one of those like busy bone type things um psa coming up uh our dog cinderella has epilepsy and um we gave her one of those busy bones uh well we gave coop and her one of those busy bone you know like it, it's it's like the rawhide alternative but the artificial smoke flavoring that they add to those things uh actually causes seizures in older and epileptic dogs so um so cinderella ended up having a seizure and Actually, that week she had two seizures, and like then she also had like a neurological episode. So it was like kind of a rough week. <laughs> um, but yeah, check check your dog's treats for for stuff. You know, don't uh, don't give them anything, even if it just says like oh natural smoke flavor. That's probably something they shouldn't be having. Um, Yeah, I mean, that's probably what I should have done, uh, is like, like these ones are, are attached to each other still. Um, so the question is what I'm going to do with these vents, like where do I glue them on? Um, can obviously put them on the legs somewhere or the arms. Again, it's all about adding little details wherever I can. I just don't want to junk him up too much, you know? I suppose I could put them right on the intersection of the seam line and this panel line that's already on here. Oh, but I don't want to do anything with the arms yet until I finish the, so like this part doesn't fit on here. I ended up having to shave it down quite a bit in order to get the sleeve to fit on there properly. So let's go ahead and do that.
hate that I glued some of these pieces. Although maybe it's not glue. One of them I realized I had just stuffed full of tape. If I could go back in time, I would probably kick my own ass way more than I than I actually had my ass kicked. Every every ass kicking I ever got growing up, I deserved three. And I got away with only one. Okay, come on. Oh, that's the sweetest thing in the world. He gets his own authentic beef bone. All right. Oh, and it looks like I even drilled through the entire part. It's like, that's how big it started, and then I whittled it down to, to just a little thing. And of course, this is... So, the way that the kit was originally designed is it's got like a mock piece here that looks like it's like it looks like a joint that's been wedged into this slot and then they just have like a fake little peg to to attach it so what I'm doing is I'm basically creating that part so I need to come in here and take this wedge that they have actually in the shoulder joint and cut it out and I did it before by using a uh, this little flexible saw. Oh, uh, did you mean to tag the restream bot bot in that? Uh... I don't have time to list all the reasons that I was doing straight whooping. Yeah. I think if we're all being honest with ourselves, uh, we've all gotten off light um, once or twice in our lives. Some of us definitely more than others. Almost took my own finger off there. I suppose I should be more careful. Um, use the small hobby knife instead of the large one. Speak of the little devil. What are you doing? Hi. Hi. Oh, you just came over here to fart on me. That's great. It's very, very ladylike. <laughs> Cinderella. You goof. 
God, I hope you guys heard that. What are you doing? No, no pause. No pause. You bad girl. You know that? You bad girl. Yeah, give me the give me the goofy face. <laughs> I love you. I love you, dummy. <laughs> you been good girl? Have you been good girl? <laughs> All right, that's enough. That's enough, sweet pea. Big ol' flops. Still more considered than my own wife. <laughs> oh, I had ninja skills on my side. That and four brothers and two sisters. Oh, wow. Yeah, no kidding. Hey, what's going on, Enders? Judging by the fact that you didn't call me a bitch, I can only assume that that's Kitty talking. But yeah, I um, I was the second youngest of of my family, so uh, I definitely got away with way too much. Cutting this little wedge out is such a pain. Why does everyone think I have to call them a bitch? Uh, that's, yeah, that's true. Well, sometimes I, I just think I need reminding. Yeah, I have, uh, I have two brothers and a sister. Um, I'm going to go back to my favorite tool here, this little uh, pin vise or whatever it is. Like I said, I picked up this... Actually, I think that this might have come in one of those uh, art snacks boxes back when I was, uh, you know, everybody has a subscription box nowadays, right? Like, I can't believe they even started doing a Gundam subscription box. Ugh. I bet it's just full of junk. Don't get me wrong, like, I love, you know, like, Gashapon stuff and, you know, getting, like, random little goodies, but... You know, it's like I will. I would want to collect one type of little goodie. The loot box culture of like, hey, have twenty five different gashapons that are not related to each other, just drives me insane. <laughs> so there we go. Got that cleared out. Well, Jess, it keeps us humble. It really does. Yeah, we had the more seasoned ones telling us things, plus figuring better ways to do what others attempted before us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah.
well, that's how we always knew that uh, that my sister was going to be a teacher because she would sit the three of us down and like have lesson plans and stuff. And it's like, I just got home from school and you want to play teacher. Like, <laughs> see. So yeah, that's what I'm going for, is where it actually looks like an authentic little joint in there. Luke Carey was trash. I said, floor-based company that's been solid. Interesting. What is that one? I mean, for one of my birthdays, my wife did get me a man crate, and uh, I'm very thankful that she did not um film me trying to open that thing uh it took me way longer than it should have um it's like i wanted to get a real crowbar they give you this like tiny little rinky dink crowbar to try and crack it open Hey, but there are definitely perks to being an only child. Not having to share. <laughs> uh, I think my brothers and I... God, how long did we all share the same room? Too long. Silver Beam Creations focuses on actual RPG characters and NPCs, not random pins or other stuff. Interesting. I actually like that. That sounds pretty badass. Which reminds me, I need to do more work on my RPGs plural, be it video game or tabletop variety, I do want to uh, start streaming some, some tabletop RPGs again here soon. Definitely going to stream some Gundam games, but also looking into... Um, Oh, you don't got to do that. Um, but also looking into doing some, uh, some alternative uh, tabletop RPGs. I don't think that there's anybody on um, YouTube or Twitch that has an ongoing Traveler campaign. I know that Glass Cannon is doing their um, Androids and Aliens. Well, they've been doing Androids and Aliens for a while. But I don't think that anyone's playing Traveler. I, I saw that uh, Seth Skrakowski, who I'm a big fan of his YouTube channel, he, he did like a whole review series about Traveler. But um, yeah, I have to thank uh, Alec from my old job for introducing me to it. The character creation in itself for Traveler is uh, is like its own game. I'm assuming you mean private message and not a misspell. I don't know. I, I, hmm. I just got one on PS4. It's like virtual on. Interesting. 
I never played Virtua on. Koopy, what's wrong, bud? What are you looking at? Probably one of the cats driving him nuts. Much better. Maybe we can pop some of these vents on here. Yeah, see, I was hoping that the uh, vent would sit like neatly in that little panel line, but. It does not. So I'll have to come up with something else. And then the way that the uh, the knee joints attach. It doesn't really leave much room for enhancement here. Oh, get, get off there. Yeah, you know, like I could put one of these little vents down here. That actually doesn't look too bad. So maybe when I... Gundam Extreme versus Maxi Boost on. Oh man, all those... I, I I like the old school Gundam versus games, Federation versus Zeon, Titans versus AU, but like the new ones are just so, they're just too much. Oh, there's a dog here. Um, So let's see what else we can add here. So if the if this is what the torso is going to look like. I was thinking about adding a different set of vents to the uh, chest armor, but these ones are just too narrow. They don't look right. So we'll stick with the uh, with the stock vents. See, that would be cool. Oh, hey, thanks for the follow. Well, that's not a good sign. if when sitting on its own oh no okay i didn't have the uh the chest all the way on i was worried that the uh that the thrusters were off center so i still haven't decided what i want to do on the shield can't come up with a decent design. Maybe I should turn to one of these uh, little templates. Actually, now this could be interesting.
So this is actually not a uh, panel line guide. It is, in fact, a part to one of those uh, one of those tiny buildings that I was using for the diorama. But it does have kind of a neat look to it. So, let's see if we can't do something with this. I definitely need to measure that better. Let's see if I've got, I had a tiny ruler around here somewhere. I don't want to use a huge ruler because it's going to be unwieldy and difficult. Sorry about that. Um, I suppose I can use one of these guides on here. Oops. Clear my workspace a little bit here. Yeah, see, it's still off center, which might actually kind of look cool, but I would prefer it to be <laughs> dead center. Asymmetrical can look cool. But it's not the look I'm going for.
Let's try taping this up and seeing where we get. Let's see, had a custom in mind for about two years now, a Master Grade GM Sniper as a Destiny, the game Hunter class with Vault of... Oh yeah, I would definitely go cloth on that. Definitely. Especially if you go for like, um, and uh... Mr. Drackmore, if he's still in the uh, chat, he'll tell you that one twelfth scale, uh, like doll parts, make excellent uh, high grade. Or uh, well, if you're doing master grade, it's probably not going to be the right scale, but high grade gunpla scale really well to one twelfth scale like doll parts. So that is to say, if you have a high-grade Gundam, they could live in Barbie's dream house. Just saying. It's not... Yes, if you haven't seen the new movie with Michael B. Jordan. Yeah, I am a fan of uh, Michael B. Jordan. Um, Creed was good. Uh, for a while, I thought that they were kind of rushing him to be like the next big thing like like he was he was hot for a while he was in a ton of movies like just back to back to back and uh you know i i think that it was like the same kind of push that um that jennifer lawrence was getting Although somehow, I think that there was nothing untoward going on with uh, Michael B. Jordan and Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> I have not seen Creed 2, but, uh, but yeah, Creed is, is a solid film. It's one of the few modern movies that, like, doesn't take a huge dump on the original.
chisel here. Oh, hey, Coop. Did you get bored of barking at strangers? Did you get bored? Oh, what's going on, Kalos? Gunpla is looking good. Um, at least I think it's looking good. The new panel lines look a lot better than the uh, than the crappy ones I did a decade ago. Look at that. Old dogs can learn new tricks. Um, uh, I did not watch uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, so you guys may discuss... But uh, no worries, cause I I'm not uh, I'm not a spoiler kind of guy. Like it doesn't bother me if uh, people spoil things for me. Um, if I'm being honest, I'm probably not even inclined to watch Falcon Winter Soldier. If only because, you know, to me, the whole Marvel Universe kind of ended with Endgame. The Marvel Cinematic Universe, I should say. Oh no, a slight error on my Mars 4. What'd you do? What did you do? Uh, I, we canceled uh, Disney Plus after the first season of Mandalorian. That was like all we actually wanted to watch on Disney Plus. <laughs> So maybe we'll sign up again using uh, using a different email address and get our free seven days to watch Mandalorian Season 2. Although Mandalorian Season 2 just kind of seems like fan service. A whole lot of tasty fan service. What are you two doing? Coop, be nice. She just wants to sit with you. But you see, Ender, this is what happens when, when an only child becomes a uh, older brother. And he has to share with an annoying little sister. Isn't that right, Cinderella? May or may not have glued two halves of the head. Oh, no! Well, that's not the worst thing in the world, because, honestly, if they're not... If they're going to be the same color anyway, then it's not terrible. I tend to... So, like, for a lot of these parts, before I paint them, I'm definitely going to glue them together. Um. 
No, I think I'm going to use not that tape. I'm going to use a slightly more diesel tape for this part. What's wrong, Coop? So let's see. This makes painting a bit awkward, yeah. I thought WandaVision was okay, but weird. Mando, season one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, that was an excellent scene. Haven't seen Falcon Winter Soldier was great segue into the next Captain America. Wouldn't have been as smooth. Oh, no, yeah, you gotta leave... <laughs> Gotta get that eye sticker off if you're gonna paint it. See, but that's interesting. So you, um, so you think that the next uh, Captain America movie is set up nicely by Falcon Winter Soldier? I assume Falcon is the new uh, Captain America, given the way things are going. Um, as someone who supported Steve Rogers during the Civil War, because uh, as I recall, Andrew, it was you who got me into comics in college with the whole Civil War storyline. And I remember I was Team Iron Man, and you were Team <laughs> Team Captain America. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. No, that, that's all I said. Is I was I, I was Team Iron Man, and you were Team uh, Captain America. I stand by my decision. But you being the bigger Captain America fan, how do you feel that uh, that the cinematic universe is going the way of the uh, later comics with Falcon being the uh, one to take up the mantle? I haven't seen Falcon Winter Soldier, but I'm going to assume it's set up. Oh, yeah. Well, and I mean, that's kind of the way it is with uh, with comic book movies, right? Is it's like, it's sequential art anyway. So the idea that you would even do movies as opposed to TV shows seems kind of silly. And I think that that's why the Netflix series were so great. With the exception of Iron Fist. Iron Fist was kind of awful. Uh, yeah, that's true. That is true. See, and I think that the movies didn't do a very good job of setting up, um, Tony Stark 
for being on the side of superhero registration. Because see, in the comic books, Civil War came on the back of um, Tony Stark after having the uh, extremist Iron Man suit built, well, not built for him, but he built the extremist Iron Man suit to go up against Malin and kind of integrated his whole body into the Iron Man suit. He was, his brain was essentially hacked and he uh, went on a killing spree by, by like, you know, just some teenage kid. And he was like, oh, you know, every single one of us superheroes is just a smoking gun. And, uh, you know, you need to, you need to have a license to carry a gun, right? Well, you need to at least have a background check. So he's like, yeah, let's register all the superheroes. In the movies, they're just like, oh, this is, this was my son that, that died because you guys didn't do your jobs. It's like. I don't think that that was enough of a, uh, I don't think that was enough of a motivator for Tony Stark to change his entire, uh, personality for, but that's just me. Um, Aunt May got gadded after Civil War in the comics, depending on the universe. Yeah, I think, uh. That was like the big thing for, for Spider-Man was like Peter Parker initially sided with with Tony. And that was the big deal. So it was like Iron Man said, if I can get Spider-Man, the guy who's been the most protective of his secret identity, to reveal who he is, then I can get anybody. Well, didn't turn out so well for him because then Aunt May got yeeted. Yeah, Daredevil and Punisher were solid. I loved Jessica Jones, too. Yeah, I'm jacking this thing all up. I need to... I need to shave this guy down and start again. Because this is looking all kinds of janky. Hashtag no registration. Still? All this time. Now I might have come around to... Uh, come around to your way of thinking on that um, it's a shame they canceled Daredevil yep well it's because you know they initially did those shows because they didn't have Disney Plus to, to do their own shows on but now they can keep all the money and not have to pay Netflix anything so 616 Aunt May dies, Ultimate Universe Peter dies. Yeah, well, and that's in the Ultimate Universe, that's where the whole Miles Morales thing comes from. Is, uh, is Peter eating it. Of course, the Ultimates universe was a lot cooler when it first came out, and, like, it was supposed to be different. And then, as time went on, the writers just kind of used it more as, like, a... As a Marvel what-if. Which was kind of annoying. Well, yeah, but what if the government is is compromised. That's why you shouldn't have it. 
which they did kind of do in the movies. The whole, like, Hydra was, was real deep into S.H.I.E.L.D. I'm actually impressed that my little three camera setup it has like no lag between at least it doesn't for me it might have lag on the stream but there's like no they all kind of move in sync with each other um, yeah miles is good because he really is like you know his own character he's got his own personality and stuff he's not just He's not just a uh, half black, half Hispanic Peter Parker. Gouged that one in way too deep. So I think I think what I'm gonna need to do is wipe this guy down, and we are going to repair him a little bit. Do I use? I think I would rather use a nicer putty. Where is it? Here we go. Repair this a little bit. The alternate miles in the video game is quite, quite fun too. Oh, does he have the uh, exaggerated swagger of a young African American teen, <laughs> or whatever that stupid <laughs> uh, review of the game was? It's probably the most insulting thing that I've ever heard said about a character. I didn't actually see the Spider-Verse movie, though. Again, my uh, my love for comic books has kind of uh, waned. For a while, it was like, oh, you know, I only like, you know, image stuff like Saga and... Um, and I loved the authority. And then just as time went on, I kind of fell out of love with the with the medium. The stories just weren't as engaging anymore, and I don't know why. Maybe it was just like fatigue, you know, recycling the same stories over and over. But yeah, I think that the uh, the quality of comic books dipped significantly. Yes, yes, he does, but I'm talking about more of the 2018 Spider-Man game. He's trying out his powers in dumb ways, like jumping off of bridges. Oh, yeah. Well, and that's what you'd expect someone who just got superpowers to do, is like, you know, try them out.
Oh, and I'm sure I've made my feelings about Robert Kirkman uh, clear in the past. Um, because I know that someone's probably going to bring up the whole uh, Invincible being on Amazon as a cartoon now. Uh, and I did love the Invincible comic book, the first, what, like 15 volumes of it. Uh, but my one big complaint with Robert Kirkman as a writer is that he's got very little stamina. He just burns out after, after a few issues and like the story just starts getting like weird and ridiculous. How many characters in the Invincible comic books died and came back like three or four different times and sometimes they were revived as different people and it was just like, dude, just, just, just end the story. Like, if you don't know what to do with the story, end it. <laughs> it, it it's, a, it's a sign that you're not in love with it anymore. Um... I'm a character happens to be demographic. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a big problem with modern comics too. It's a shame they did uh Carol Danvers so dirty because I loved the Miss Marvel comic books. Andrew, you know. I uh I followed Miss Marvel for a while. And then even when uh, they made Cam Carol Danvers Captain Marvel, I was like, sick, this is awesome. And then just the storytelling went down real quick. So now I've got all this extra putty that I didn't mean to mix up and not a lot to do with it. I suppose I could always make a few more molds. Um, let's see. Complaining about having to learn physics so he doesn't face plant while web swinging and all that jazz. Yeah, I mean... That's that's interesting. That that's character. Like that's that's good storytelling right there. Um but yeah, if you have a good story with good characters, you don't need exactly. Marvel's been doing that since the 40s though. Yeah, I mean to a certain extent. Um I think that a lot of that stuff is kind of, uh, people read into it more than what was there to begin with. Uh, even Stan Lee said as much, you know, he was asked at a, uh, that's what Captain America literally is. Wait. Oh, <laughs> hey, we have demographic here. Please watch. Wait, Captain America is literally what? <laughs> but, um, yeah, even Stan Lee said as much uh, at, a, at a at a comic convention years ago when someone asked him, like, hey, did you base uh, Professor X and Magneto on Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr.? And he was like, no, but if that's what you read into it, sure, you know, um, which in a lot of ways, it's kind of insulting to Malcolm X, if you think about it, because, like, are, are you saying that Malcolm X is a bad guy? <laughs> are, you, are you saying that he's, a, that he's like, a mastermind of, of evil mutants? <laughs> um, Cap has exaggerated 
finger snapping of a young 40s mob enforcer. <laughs> Uh, made to represent fight fashion. Well, yeah, I mean, and I say the same thing about Gundam too, right? So, you know, every now and again, people obviously break out into the old Gundam argument of like, you know, war is bad, wow, cool robot kind of thing. But at the end of the day, Gundam, much like Transformers, was a TV show. It was designed to be a 30-minute commercial for toys. <laughs> um... You know, it wasn't meant to be this big uh, commentary on on whether war was good or bad. And, you know, Tomino did his best to work that messaging into the story. But in much the same way, uh, Captain America, just like Superman, just like Wonder Woman, they were all just meant to to sell newspapers and sell these like little pulp comics. It was all a way of supporting the war effort in a way that was, you know, making them money. So, yeah, the characters are pretty pretty flat and hokey. It was only as they kind of grew up that they started to take on a life of their own and become more than just a hokey representation of the American dream or whatever. Um, that's how I interpret it anyway. Oh, hey, I appreciate that. Oh, yeah. Looney Tunes did make bank. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Just remember, every penny you spend on a Bugs Bunny cartoon is one more bullet for a Nazi. <laughs> Stuff like that. <laughs> but yeah, that's, you know, whenever anyone gets like too uh, heavy into the political implications of insert franchise here, I'm like, guys, the, these are these are toy commercials, right? Like, you know, I'm not about to sit here and say that Optimus Prime saying that freedom is the right of all sentient beings. Yeah, okay, bud. Just just change into a truck so that I can buy your figure for my kid. <laughs> I don't think that uh, Optimus Prime has any insightful messages for today's youth beyond buy this toy. <laughs> um... EC Comics of Krypton Horror. Oh yeah, there's there's a Richmond Comic Con. I dare say that I like the Richmond Comic Con more than uh, more than New York these days. Just um, you know, it, it's been it's been a few years since since I've been to a New York Comic Con, and I think I've mentioned this in the past, but like just the commercialization of it, and it's you know these days it's not even a Comic Con; it's just like a random nerd convention con like you know there's like supernatural and like all these you know cw shows and stuff like that none of it has anything to do with comics anymore and the artist alley where all of the actual comic creators end up being has gotten smaller and smaller and pushed to the corner uh like they're in the basement of the javits center at this point and then like you know everything else is just loot boxes for sale um, shoot, I even have, like, let's see, yikes, <laughs> the last time I went to a Comic Con in New York, I came home with a, uh, a Mr. Meeseeks loot box that was, you know, is junk, it, again, it's like, oh, here's a random mug with, with, a uh, Rick and Morty stuff on it, and here's a, Here's a Rick and Morty t-shirt that's, you know, size extra small, so you're not going to be able to wear it, but you can say you have it. <laughs> uh, every penny spent is another page of Joker fighting red. Yeah, comic cons, black comics. Yep, indeed. 
Oh yeah, Emerald City. I've never been to that one. Um But yeah, and there's there's two technically because there's like the Virginia Comic Con and then there's the Richmond Comic Con. Um again, I haven't been to any in, in years, uh due to due to waning interest and uh you know keeping up with all of this, you know. See, now, if, if someone were to organize a Gundam Con over here in the States, I think that that might go a long way towards, uh, you know, again, we're always talking about, like, I wish that uh, that Bandai would do more things to cater to the West that aren't a Netflix movie. Oh, my God. That's just going to be a whole, whole hot mess. Don't get me started on it. Um, only two conventions I've been to were Manchester Comic Con and Insomnia 59. Insomnia 59? I've never heard of that. Alright, let's see if we can get back on track here with this, because... Because obviously, since I jacked up the shield, I need to redeem myself. Um, if you have something to sell, I <laughs> I'll sponsor your table. Yeah, I... Uh... I don't know that I will ever be able to uh, do anything strictly Gundam related as uh, as Bandai is very protective of their copyrights, as they should be. You know, everyone should be protective of their, their IP. Um, and you find that a lot at, uh, at comic conventions too, are just like straight up crooks. Like people that will take artists work and then like print it on an iPhone case and be like hey come get your iPhone case with Adi Granov's Iron Man I think I've even got one like for the record I didn't pay for this but you know an iPhone case with uh with Adi Granov's Iron Man artwork on it somebody I used to work with gave this to me uh, it's obviously for like an iPhone 4. Um, you know, did Adi Granoff see a dime from the sale of that probably $30 to $50 iPhone case? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So, so yeah, just a shame. Gaming convention in the UK only went with college a few years back, a couple hours. Oh man, that stinks. Tucson, I feel, was very bad about protecting IP. I imagine. I mean, you can probably get away with a lot more of that stuff out there than, uh, than you know, at your San Diego's and all that stuff. Come on now. There's already a panel line there. Just follow that. Why are you trying to veer to the side? Although, when will we have conventions again? Who knows?
Uh, they had some Ian games set up for old Halo, stuff like that. A bunch of advertising for gamers. Purple. Yeah. Yeah, I only recently found out, um, and tell me if you guys knew this, because I felt like an idiot learning it. Um, I only recently found out that uh, the old Nintendo Power Glove wasn't actually made by Nintendo. It was a uh, it was a third party peripheral, which is why it didn't have that much support for it. There were only like two games that that really worked with the Power Glove. Um, which is so interesting because it's like, you know, it's become such an iconic piece of uh, 80s memorabilia. Like everybody associates. Oh yeah, the Nintendo Power Glove, I remember that. But it's like, no, 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 the Power Glove was not Nintendo. Um, I want conventions with financial advisor. That's the rational side of my brain <laughs> screams for it. No, it's only pain. Yeah. Oh, nice work, man. I can't wait to hear what you came up with. I have not finished my Gumpla. <laughs> but then, let's face it, I was not setting out to finish this evening anyway. Uh, this is going to be a long and painful process. And it doesn't help that I really just don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> And nobody I know owned a power glove. Oh, we had one. We definitely had one. Imagine getting clocked by <laughs> Yeah. Oh, man. Well, I think I need to stop here before I make any more uh, whiskey-induced errors. Um, and I think it's time to take the pups out for a walk and feed them. So... I am going to take off here. Uh, I appreciate you all for hanging out with me. I'm sure it'll be on Mrs. Requiem's channel soon. She asked for another song a while ago. Well, I um, definitely uh, reach out to me with that with that new song because I'd love to uh, put together a new uh, intro for her, um, something a little better, a little more modern. Um, yeah, see, so there you go. The Tequila Gundam is the racist version of the Mexico uh, Gundam from G Gundam. I'm making the Whiskey Gundam the Tex-Mexican Gundam. That's what this will, this project will be called. Um, yeah, take it easy, Andrew. I appreciate you uh, popping, popping by. Everyone, thank you so much for uh, for putting up with this terrible excuse for a Gunpla stream. Um, but I appreciate uh, hanging out and chatting with you guys. Hope you all have a great evening, great rest of your weekend, and I will catch you later.